a look at graphing parabolas when the opening isn't standard, but in this case, the first two examples that I have here, they're acute openings. We'll see how that changes, how that affects our graphing technique. So we start off with y equal 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 4. My vertex would be located at 3, negative 4. So I'm going to locate 3, negative 4. Now as I graph this, a standard movement would be right or left 1, up 1. That 2 is simply going to do a vertical stretch. I'm going to multiply that by 2. It's going to become 2 times what I typically expect. So if I go right 1, I expect to go up 1, but the 2 is going to multiply and say now go up 2 units. When I go left 1, I'll have a sister point that goes up 2. Again with our standard movements, I would expect to go 2 units to the right and go 4. But because of this 2, 4 times 2 is going to be 8. So I'll go 1, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'll have a sister point. It should be right across from that. It's just one more unit over. And so then I can connect those dots. As I connect those dots, this would be an acute opening. An acute opening. I want to go through that a little bit finer detail for you. Make sure you understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to find a piece of paper here. Sometime today. There we go. So from the last video, you guys recognize that I was going just in space. I'm just randomly, there's a point. A standard movement is right one, up one. Left one, up one. That's a standard movement. So it goes one to one. If you have a multiplier where, say, A is 2 or A is 3 or whatever, the right or left movements will never change. So I, let's start with this one. Let's start with just the 2. If I say, here's my vertex, I go right 1, it's just going to multiply this. That's why I call that a vertical stretch. And now this is 2. So if I'm considering A being 2, I go right 1 up 2, left 1 up 2. Now, from the standard movement, I expect to go 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. How that changes here is when I go 2 units, this 4 gets multiplied by 2, so now I'm going to jump 8. If I go 3, I expect to go 9, because 3 squared is 9. Now I would go 2 times 9, which is 18. So when you look at this, let me maybe draw this a different way for you. Make sure you're understanding what we're doing. Standard movements say this. Here's my vertex. I go 1 is to 1. And then I say 2 is to 4. And 3 is to 9. So I got 1, 1. 2, 4, 3, 9. If I have A equaling, let's go crazy, let's say A is 5, then I would do this. I would have my standard movement of 1. I expect to go up by 1, but 1 times 5 would be 5. So this would be 5. Then I do my 2 units out. As I go 2 units out, I was expecting to go 4, but 4 times 5 would be 20. And then the third movement out, right or left, I expect to go 9, but 9 times 5 would be 45 units up. And those would be all lattice points that I'd be able to find. The feasibility, would this be easy to graph or nice to graph? Not, no, not necessarily. But we need to be aware of how to find lattice points if we need them. So let me continue with this. Let me graph a couple more of these and see how that affects us here. For this second example, I've got y equal negative 2 quantity x plus 4 squared plus 5. So my vertex would be at negative 4, 5. I locate negative 4. I go up to 5. 
And I'm just going to be using the same concept I've been talking about. I've got an A value here that's negative 2. So it tells me I should go right 1, down 1 is what I expect as a standard movement, but the negative 2 is saying go twice that. So I go down 2 units. Left 1, down 2 units. Right 2, I expect 4, but I need to double that. So I'm going to go down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I have a sister point. Usually when you have a scalar that's bigger than one, you're not going to get too many points on there. So five is more than enough. And you can see that these parabolas are kind of scrunched together. So they have that vertical stretch. I call that an acute opening. And then let's finish off with two standard form equations. Go back, because this is really what you're going to see the most of. I have a vertex of negative five negative 3. So I go left 5, down 1, 2, 3. There's my vertex. Standard movements, right 1, up 1, left 1, up 1. Right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 2, up 4. Ran out of space on my grid, and that's okay. So now I can just connect them dots, and there's a nice standard parabola. I want to finish off with an example that may throw you for a little bit of a loop. It's actually one of the easier ones. It's simply y equals x squared minus 6. I don't have to shift right or left for my vertex. In other words, when you have the parenthesis, we take the opposite of the value. What would be in a parenthesis here would be 0. So my vertex is 0, negative 6. Tell me, just drop down 6 units. That's what it's saying. And now my standard opening, it's saying we're going upward, standard. So I go right one, up one, left one, up one, right two, up four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It helps if you can count. And then three, up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sister point. Connect those dots. And there would be a standard parabola. Once again, when it didn't have the parentheses, it's implied that I can just say uh, x minus 0 quantity squared, which means that it is going to be found on the y-axis. It's just a parabola that was moved up or down. Which means if I just said y equals x squared, I'm at the vertex, or my vertex is at the origin. I can just start right at the origin with these movements and graph. So there's four more. That's a total of eight examples of how to graph parabolas using pretty much the standard movements. With the twos, we had the scalars, so we just multiplied those by two.